This video will introduce you to the Unix Linux command fork, which creates a new child process that belongs to a given parent process. So I've made some code called fork example, and here it is. And I have a main function here. This is in C. And I started off by calling this command fork. Now, to call fork, you have to be on a Linux or Unix system, and you need to include this sys slash unistd.header file. Um, now, when you call fork, the OS creates a new process that uses the exact same source code as the process that launched the child process. However, there is a difference. See that fork returns a value that gets saved in this variable ID. This variable ID can store several possible values. One possible value is zero. So if ID is equal to zero, it means that we are inside of the child process. If ID is equal to negative one, that means that an error occurred. So you tried to create a new process and the OS failed to do that, perhaps because you are creating too many processes. This kind of error is very common if you have an out of control loop that's just forking processes nonstop. Um, but if the system is out of resources, uh, then you may also get this error. And then the other possibility is that ID will be a process ID number. And so that's covered by this else case here. And this is the case that corresponds to the parent process. Because when you call fork, the value that is returned inside of the parent process is the process ID of the child that was created. Now, the child that was just created does not have any child processes yet, so it gets a value of zero instead. Now, I have different code for both the child case and the parent case. And basically what I do is I loop for a while and I print out a line of text and then I have a sleep. So this sleep command causes that particular process to wait for one second, which is going to allow other processes to run. So what we're going to see is that the output of these two processes will be interleaved. Now the parent process says that it's the parent with a process ID or PID of get PID. So get PID stands for get process ID. It also comes from that sys slash unistd header file. And then it says that it is the child of the number held in this variable ID. So the parent process will tell us what its ID is and what the child process ID reported to it by fork is. Now in contrast, the child process will tell us what its ID is using get PID, get process ID, and this call inside of the child process should match the value of ID stored in the parent process. Additionally, the child process is going to tell us what its parent's process ID is using get PPID for get parent process ID. Note that it's very easy to confuse these two function calls, so pay close attention when using them. The last little anomaly of this code is that I have the child process looping for loop count plus two iterations, whereas the parent only loops for loop count iterations. 
We'll see why this is when I run the code in just a second. So this is the code. I'm going to exit. I will compile this using GCC, which by default puts the code in a file called a.out, which I'll run. And when I run this, we'll see text outputting. And so here we go. It says parent ID with process ID 22326. And we get this repeating over and over again. And then at the end, we see why I had the child loop iterate two more times. So first, we'll confirm that the parent has a process ID of 22326. And it creates a child with a process ID of 22327. And then the child confirms that it does indeed have the process ID 22327 and that its parent does indeed have the ID 22326. So these lines of text are in agreement. That repeats several times. But at the end, first see that the bash prompt has returned. So this indicates that the parent process is terminated. So at the point when the parent process terminates, I, the user, could interact with the console and type commands in, but the child process is still running in the background and it's gonna keep outputting text, even if that kind of steps on my toes as a user and sort of interferes with my use of the console, but it's gonna do it anyway. And so I get the prompt because the parent process terminated and the child process keeps running, but here it says, child with process ID 22327, that hasn't changed, but it says that the parent ID is now one. This is because the parent process has terminated. There is no longer a parent process in existence whose ID is 22326. So when a child process's parent terminates, it's parent is reassigned to the initializing process. This is a special Unix process that happens to have a process ID of one. Now, this run had the parent and child perfectly interleaved back and forth, but I'm gonna go ahead and run the command again just to show you that this will not always be the case. In general, when you are interleaving processes, it's possible for the order in which the processes take turns to get a bit mixed up. And we'll see this eventually. There we go. So in this run, we see that the parent went before the child, the first one, two, three, four, five times. But then, coincidentally, the child came out on top here and they switched orders. That's because when you are pausing processes, you're telling them to sleep for a second, but these times are a bit approximate and you can't always guarantee what the OS will do in terms of scheduling these processes. Notice that we get two child, or sorry, your two parent outputs in a row, then two child outputs in a row, then two parent outputs, and then two children. So this one actually swaps back and forth, which is what you'd normally expect. So when you have two processes running um, at the same time, even if they are pausing to take turns, you really can't guarantee that they will take turns in a perfectly fair, predictable manner. Whenever processes go to sleep and are being switched in and out by the OS, there's always a chance that something else will be going on behind the scenes that makes the timing a bit unusual and a bit unpredictable, which is what makes parallel programming so difficult and why synchronization is required. And so that's something we'll learn about in a later lesson.